Well, President Obama is expected to sign the new set of financial reforms into law this week. And these new regulations are somewhat of a mixed bag for Visa and for MasterCard. Sanford Bernstein's Rod Bourgeois says that there's both good and bad in the bill for the two companies. He's been institutional investors' top-ranked analyst for his group for four straight years. He's here with us this morning. And it's interesting to hear good and bad because last week the market seemed to be shocked, right, by the numbers that Bank of America put on the costs of financial reform, particularly because of the consumer card businesses here. Sure. So why wasn't that baked in? Yeah, well, I think a lot of the bad news for Visa and MasterCard is already priced in. The stocks over the last month have been hit hard on the concerns that regulation will alter their, their strong business models. I think Bank of America came out and basically made assumptions about reductions in interchange fees um, early in the process before the Fed has actually decide, decided how low they will actually uh, take interchange fees. In some ways, I think Bank of America has now put a lot of the bad news on the table, and it's possible the Fed will not be as aggressive as the assumptions embedded um, in Bank of America's earnings report on Friday. So how will these new regulations actually change business for Visa and MasterCard? Well, What's going to be different? Sure. There's two things, really. There's two provisions in the Durbin Amendment to the Financial Reform Bill that will affect Visa and MasterCard. The first is that the Fed will now have the authority to regulate interchange fees, which are the fees that merchants pay to card-issuing banks right. when, a, when a credit card or a debit card transaction is made. It's just the debit card transactions and the interchange fees there that are being regulated here. So that's the first thing. Lower interchange will actually somewhat make Visa and MasterCard's bank customers less healthy. They'll have less interchange revenues. The other provision in the Durbin Amendment that I think is, is, is concerning. And that's the part of financial reform that specifically addresses this, an amendment that few thought when it was proposed would actually make it into the final law, and it is. No one expected this amendment would be passed this year. Um, there is a no network exclusivity provision in the Durbin Amendment that will essentially mandate that all debit cards have multiple card brands on the card and then it also will give the merchants the ability to route each transaction to the lowest price network. So to create a market there in some It'll ways. create more competition, potentially some price competition and even some share shifts that really don't exist today. Um, in the debit card market. Yeah, so where does the share go? Where does market share go and what does it mean for consumers? Well, before the share went to the network that was able to have the best relationship with the card issuing right. banks, right? When this regulation goes through, you're actually going to give the merchants the ability to negotiate with the networks on price, which is not a dynamic that happens um, in a big way today. And so all of a sudden, you will have an incentive as a card network to lower your fees to attract merchants to route to your network. And that's the new dynamic that I think will exist in the market that investors, quite frankly, over the last couple of weeks have been quite concerned about. And I think that is being priced into the stocks at this point. You point out the three largest banks account for 38% of U.S. debit volume here. So, I mean, tell me about what you're comfortable with in your portfolio right now. Sure. Well, the reason that data point is important is that there have been arguments that Visa and MasterCard will be relatively unaffected by this new right. regulation. And the argument there is that many debit cards already have multiple brands on the card. So when this regulation mandates multiple brands on each card, they're saying it won't have much of an incremental impact. Our argument is the trend has clearly been towards single branded cards, particularly to Visa. Visa has won a number of Visa exclusive arrangements with the largest banks and the three largest banks, again, almost 40% of U.S. debit volume now has Visa exclusive cards. So this regulation will be a meaningful impact on the fundamentals. Fortunately, I think from a valuation perspective, it's priced in. Now, you make the point that we're talking about the debit business, you know, direct transactions, taking cash out of people's accounts, not credit cards yet. Do you expect further changes here? Financial reform, if you look back historically, does not occur very often. And I think the political forces will focus on other issues like immigration reform, et cetera, over the next couple of years. So I don't think in the next couple of years it's likely that credit cards will be regulated. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, that is something investors are concerned about. Now that debit card is being regulated, in the future could, could the credit card regulation come down the path as well? All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for giving us some perspective here. You know, I, people say with financial reform, it's a flesh wound, not a mortal one. For the credit card companies, for the debit card business, where is this? 
Well, I think it's, I, I don't think it's a mortal wound at all. And the reason for that, the main reason is that it's only 20% of Visa's business that can be affected by this. Because by our estimates, only 20% of their revenues comes from U.S. debit. Right. And with MasterCard, it's only about 11% of revenues. In that part of the business, it's a meaningful change in competitive dynamics. Mm -hmm. but, but fortunately, only half of revenues even come from the U.S. These companies are very strong internationally yeah. and also have non-price ways to compete. All right. Good perspective. Thank you so much.